Hey all, this is my GBC batch counter built for the Discord, the 2020 Discord build challenge, which was to build a module, design, design and build a module that would output balls in batches of exactly 13. Um, so in this case, I've designed to go for a software and hardware approach. Uh, so let's add some balls to the input uh, and have a look at how it all works. So first up, we'll come and have a look at the brains of it. Um, so I've got a little powered up city hub here on the right. Um, we've got a smartphone on the left. Uh, and while it's here, we've got three dials. We've got a, the first dial here, it actually allows me to dial the number of balls up and down. So in this case, I can dial it down, seven, eight. So now it's only gonna count to eight. But let's put it up to back up to 13. Uh, can also take it right up to 30, a standard, the maximum batch that a GBC module can pass at any one time. Oh, let's put a couple more balls in. Uh, the, yellow, the yellow gauge is obviously the count of balls passing to the next module. Uh, and the grey gauge on the right is actually for when I'm running it off batteries and it allows me to dial the speed of the motor up and down. We can notice it's going super slow at the moment. So let's, let's notch it up a couple of notches and then have a look at some of the other parts of the mechanism. The next part is the motor control. So I drive the whole thing off a single motor and take advantage of this flip-flop gear arrangement. So we'll notice here, as it just gets up to 13, that the motor will actually run in reverse. That flips this gear to drive this other one. And this gear is the one that controls the up and down of the output ramps, like so. You can see the, the lift arm's lifting up. Uh, and it returns back to the bottom just from gravity. So it's just, just the geometry means that even when it's at full tilt, it'll always return back to close. Um, when the motor runs the other direction, uh, it runs the conveyor, which is what we can see up here on the left. So let's um, throw a few more balls back on the input again, and we'll uh, keep going on the tour. Cool. Uh, so this is the output area. Uh, not a huge amount to mention on this, other than obviously I've got a couple of things here. I've got the little output flap, which just stops any balls to make it all the way to the end, dropping straight into the next module, just like that. Uh, and we also have a couple of slopes. And these slopes ensure that when it passes it to the next module, it's always narrower than that, uh, that 10 bricks wide. Um, the sensor mechanism is this little, this little dookie here. Here's this little distance sensor. Um, and so when I originally built this, I actually had the balls passing directly in front of it but I found it was all working a bit too quick and the software couldn't quite keep up with it. So what I've done instead is I've got this little bent lift arm here that the balls lift up and it means that um, the balls actually sit in front of the center for uh, a little bit of time now. So it's, it's, they stay in like for half a second. Uh, and this little half a second is enough to basically uh, allow everything to sort of catch up and know that the ball has passed. Um, other than that, um, that covers the main features of it. <laughs> so I'm going to step back here, we'll load up the intro again, uh, and we'll just have a look at the different parts of working. In fact, let's, let's get this back up to 85 again. Just going to sit this here, we'll put some balls over in the front. So yeah, of course my intro is the at least standard 10 by 10 input, uh, under 10 bricks tall. My output uh, over here on the right is obviously uh, above 10 bricks tall, so I can get it to the next module. Uh, the other reason why it's good, good to have ball bins when you're designing modules because you can design them to fit the height. So you can see here the intro picking up the little chain lift, lift picking up the balls, taking them to the next module. Blech, what am I talking about? Taking them to the intro. You can see that little sensor popping up every time a ball goes past. And then if we come all the way around here, we can see the output tray here dumping off. So that is my GBC batch counter, uh, designed for the Discord bit ball, a Discord build challenge. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my quick overview, uh, and I look forward to making more videos. That was the end of showing off the module. How if any of you are interested, want to stick around for a couple more minutes, I'll walk through, through the different parts of the program uh, and how it all works. 
So if we come over here, all the way over here to the left, uh, we've got these four blocks, these four little um, trigger blocks on the left. Ooh, zoom in and we see um, what we have here, if I can get this zoom right, is we have a button going into a trigger, uh, play button. Uh, and what this does is these are the increments for the numbers. So back in the actual program itself, uh, which is here, so we have the four buttons here. So those parts of these little loops of the, well not loops, so say these little, these triggers basically will increment numbers up and down um, uh, in, the, in the app. Up at the top here, we have the little initialization uh, and this just sets all those starting variables. So we start with a motor speed of 80, a batch of 13. Um, and what I do just to sort of make sure there's no balls stuck in the output, I actually pass the batch size into the counter and that sort of triggers uh, a dump straight away. Uh, this little loop up here, it just drives the gauges. So this takes the output of all the variables and puts them into the little gauges so that as numbers are counting or I'm pressing the plus and minus, the gauges change. Uh, this little A floating by itself is just so that I can see the output of that little distance sensor. So if I just come up here and block it, we'll see it drops down to one. So this is just a way for me to see what values were coming out of the sensor before I actually use it in a program. Uh, and it's good for some manual debugging just to see what's going on. All right, let's get down to the business part of the program. So this little bit down the bottom is the actual business is the actual bit that's sort of the main logic of the program. So this first little one at the top, um, this is responsible for counting. So what happens is it comes through and it's it's reading continuously. It's it's in a loop. I just oh, shrink this down a little. The whole thing's in a loop, so it's continuously reading the input of that little distance sensor. And it comes through and it waits until there's something in front of the distance sensor. Now, um, it doesn't count straight away though. What it does is it actually waits until there's something not in front of the distance sensor. So this is the same as if you're on a keyboard and you're pushing a button down uh, and up and letting it go. And it wouldn't actually count until you lift the button up. And this ensures that I don't get uh, double counts for the time that that little blocker stays in, in front of the sensor. All right, so that's the little counter loop there. So it's just reading them and every time that sort of, it sees something, it increments a, a variable by one. Uh, and then down the bottom, we actually, this last little section here is the section that's controlling uh, the, the, the motor itself. So uh, we have our little decision at the start, which just says, is the current count greater than uh, the count I want to achieve? If it is, then run the little section at the top. And this section at the top is the one that's actually um, reversing the motor, so it reverses it. Um, well, it stops, waits a little bit, reverses it, um, waits a little bit, uh, plays the horn sound. And the horn is kind of there as a nice little audible reminder, but also it actually acts as a delay. Uh, and then when you're done with that, um, carry on with the loop again. Uh, the bottom section here is just, that's running the conveyor. So anytime the count is basically less than what we want to achieve, run the conveyor. Uh, the second little bit on the right, I just found with bigger batches, so if it's basically a batch of 20 or greater, it actually does a double tip. So it'll tip once, come back to neutral, uh, and then tip again. Uh, so that is the actual logic of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, not a particularly complex program, uh, but certainly, uh, yeah, a few challenges getting used to uh, the block language and uh, writing, writing code on a phone. All right, so that's... Uh, this is, uh, this is definitely it this time. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video of my uh, GBC batch counter, a uh, quick over review of the software that's involved, uh, and I look forward to making more videos. Thank you.